There are 73 million baby boomers in the US and they can all retire by 2030. But at the same time, 45% of baby boomers have no retirement savings and they are now the fastest growing generation to become homeless. So if everyone is saying baby boomers are the wealthiest generation, what's going on? What happened to all their money? Chances are, when you think of retirement, you see yourself sipping spicy margaritas in Costa Rica or cruising down the Miami freeway counting your money, all thanks to the three-legged stool. In finance, the stool basically represents the three most common ways retirees receive income in their twilight years. The only problem is, the three legs are starting to get wobbly. Firstly, there's savings to think about. After working for 46 years, you're expected to have a sizable nest egg saved up from which you can slowly withdraw from after you stop working. The problem is, the average baby boomer isn't prepared. 45% of baby boomers have no retirement savings. And out of those who do, 28% have less than $100,000 saved. Now $100,000 might sound like a lot of money, but on average, people older than 65 spend about $52,000 a year to live. There's rising medical expenses, delicious sugar-free applesauce, and Billy Joel concert tickets. You don't have to be a math whiz to realize the average baby boomer will burn through their savings sooner rather than later. And it's already happening. Baby boomers are now the fastest growing generation to experience homelessness. In the 1990s, 11% of the homeless population were 50 and older. Today, that number is nearly 50%. Many baby boomers across the country are now coming to terms with the reality that working your entire adult life is no longer enough to guarantee that you'll have a roof over your head in your later years. So we know the savings leg can't be relied on. What about the other two? But first, if you want to easily save more money, then you have to use a savings goal tracker and checklist. I'm giving away mine for free, link down below. During the Great Depression, many working families lost their jobs. Businesses collapsed, people starved, and food rations became the norm. One of the groups hit the hardest were older Americans, who despite working for 46 years of their lives, now lived in poverty. In response, President Roosevelt passed the Social Security Act in 1935 to provide a financial safety net for retirees. Basically, retirees received monthly checks from the government to spend on essentials. But Social Security wasn't free. The government designed it as a pay-as-you-go program. They added a new tax for those currently working. From every paycheck, a bit of money was deducted and put into the Social Security Trust Fund. In return, current workers were promised that they would receive monthly checks from the fund after they retire. And it worked. After committing decades of their lives to the workforce, retired older Americans could now enjoy some leisure without constantly worrying about finances. Not surprisingly, the poverty rate among elderly households fell from 35% in 1959 to 11% in 1995. Now, Social Security is the number one source of income security for retirees, with over 90% of retirees receiving Social Security benefits. But all of that is about to change. Remember the little promise the government made? Current workers were promised that they would receive monthly checks from the fund after they retire. In the 1980s, President Reagan began to take money from the Social Security Fund and spend it on other stuff wars, tax cuts for the rich, and other government programs. President Bush and Clinton followed suit. In place of the trillions of Social Security funding they all took, they just put in an IOU, a piece of paper that promises the US government would eventually pay the money back. The problem is, they never really did. The Social Security Fund has been cash flow negative since 2010, meaning more money is going out than coming in. For a long period of time, baby boomers were the largest generation in the US. During their working years, they contribute a lot of money to the fund for the silent generation to draw from. And now that the largest generation is retiring in mass, they're starting to get some of that money back. The problem is, there's now fewer workers paying into the system. It's projected that the Social Security Reserve Fund is gonna run out by 2034, meaning all new benefits will come directly from current payroll taxes. But taxes would only cover 77% of their promised full benefits. You can think of it like this. If you were promised a $1,000 Social Security check every month, now you would only receive $770. As the cost of everyday items increase, a 20% pay cut is pretty significant. The problem is many Americans believe the 2034 year forecast is guaranteed, but it isn't. It's a warning about what will happen in a good economy. 
it doesn't really account for the unknown and uncertainty of what could happen during a bad one. Since 2019, the size of the gap between what Social Security has promised and what it expects to pay has grown by nearly $10 trillion, more than 40%. For every $1 that the program has collected in payroll taxes, it has generated roughly $2 of promises that no one expects it to keep. But what about the third leg that baby boomers can hopefully rely on? Prior to the 1980s, pensions were the mainstream private option for retirement income. Basically, companies would set aside money for their employees, invest that money for them, and then these employees would be guaranteed payouts after they retire. It was a time when company loyalty actually meant something. The more you work there, the more money you received in your payout. But then Ted Benna changed everything. He believed pension plans were too expensive and too risky for companies, and so he did something about it. Enter the 401k plan, a much worse retirement option in literally every single way, where you now set your money aside, you pick the investments, and if you don't do this, then too bad, so sad. Companies love this alternative. It was a lot less work and a lot less risk for them, so many stopped offering pension plans and migrated to 401k plans instead, shifting the cost of retirement from the employer to the employee. And the timing was perfect. There were two stock market booms in the 1980s and the 1990s, which easily convinced workers that investing in your own 401k was the better move. From 1980 to 2008, participation in pension plans fell from 38% to 20%, while participation in plans like the 401k increased from 8% to 31%. The problem is, a whole new generation of people who never invested before were now chasing the bull market with the nest egg they needed to retire. Steve Sholo and Dan Robertson were two public school teachers who didn't know much about finance, but they saw everyone else was raving about the 401ks, so they decided to join in. By 1996, they had doubled their retirement nest egg to $500,000. By 1999, their portfolio topped $1 million. And they were thrilled. They thought they made the best decisions of their lives. But by the early 2000s, the dot-com bubble burst, and Sholo and Robertson saw their fortune crater from $1.5 million down to $500,000. Tens of thousands of people who had been on the verge of retirement were now forced back to work because they lost everything. But the problems didn't stop there. Whenever money and investing is involved, you can bet Wall Street finds an opportunity to profit. This is Robert Hilton Smith, an economist who regularly contributed to his 401k plan, who one day noticed something was off about his account. Despite the market doing relatively well, his 401k investment account was barely increasing. After digging for days and weeks, he finally saw where his money was going. The plan itself was invested into more than 20 different mutual funds, each of which had its own costs and fees. There's asset management fees, trading fees, marketing fees, record keeping fees, administrative fees, fees for not knowing there were fees. A two to 3% fee might seem inconsequential, but it's not. Just as investing your money allows you to compound and increase your wealth in the long term, cost and fees also rise exponentially over time. Suppose you have an investment portfolio worth $60,000. You plan to contribute $500 a month to it for the next 25 years, and it grows at an average rate of 8% per year. At the end, you'd have $884,635 in your portfolio. That's a lot of money. But if you had a 2% fee, you'd be left with only $606,450. That tiny 2% fee costs you $278,000. In 2012, Hilton Smith reported that on average, an American family will pay nearly $155,000 in 401k fees to Wall Street over their lifetime. But that's not even the worst of it. The idea behind these high fees is that when it comes to mutual funds in your 401k, a professional is helping you invest your money to beat the stock market. The problem is, about 51% of actively managed funds fail to do so. You're actually statistically better off hiring this cat, Orlando. In 2013, Orlando outperformed experienced and qualified wealth managers at picking stocks. And the best part? Orlando doesn't require any hidden fees, just a can of tuna once in a while. About 12,000 people will turn 65 every single day in 2024. The problem is, their 401k plans are being wiped out. Fidelity found that the average 401k balance fell by 23% in Q3 of 2023, and many are expecting the stock market 
to get even worse. According to McKinsey, Americans are living longer than ever thanks to better working conditions and healthcare innovations. Life expectancy has nearly doubled since the late 1890s, which is great. We all have more time to spend with our parents and grandparents. The only problem is, it now takes a lot more money to retire than what we, our government, and economy originally anticipated. In economics, they call this the old age dependency ratio. Basically, it's the number of individuals older than 65 per 100 people of working age. The higher the ratio, the greater the burden on the current workforce and overall economy to support and provide for the retirees. Government services and programs will be stretched, taxes will need to be increased on the working population to support the increased expenses, and potential pressure to increase the retirement age for future generations. The average old age dependency ratio across OECD countries like the UK, Australia, and Germany is 28, meaning for every 100 working age people, there are 28 individuals who are 65 years or older. The problem is, this ratio is projected to hit 50% in the US by 2075. As housing, education, childcare, and food prices continue to climb, many Americans are struggling to make ends meet. As a result, more and more of the younger generation are refusing to have kids. If you think about it, our entire social and economic structures have the same issues as a Ponzi scheme. If the next generation isn't bigger than the last, it impacts almost everything. Naturally, as you get older and retire, expenses go down. No more overpriced drinks at the bar or buying the latest tech gadgets. But there is one expense that will go up without fail. One particular crisis that baby boomers will have to face head on. A 2017 research study found that a healthy 65-year-old couple retiring will need to spend $275,000 to cover their healthcare costs in retirement. Doctor visits, 20 different pills, and stress balls. 70% of baby boomers will need some form of long-term care, assisted living, hospice care, or nursing homes. The problem is, the average cost of a nursing home is between $7,908 and $9,034 per month. So where are baby boomers expected to get this kind of money from? Most don't have enough in savings, social security will be cut, and 401k plans are crashing. But if you want to quickly save more money, using a savings goal tracker and checklist is the most effective way to do that. Get mine for free, link down below. You might think one option is Medicare, basically federal health insurance for people over 65. It's more affordable than private insurance. The problem is Medicare doesn't cover long-term care. So the other option is Medicaid, basically health insurance for low-income Americans. But to be eligible for Medicaid, you need to be at or below 133% of the federal poverty level, meaning most middle-class baby boomers will be in between being too poor to afford the care they need and too rich to qualify for Medicaid. But even if they're able to get long-term care, there's still one more problem. Getting into a nursing home is more challenging than ever. Nursing homes are experiencing staffing shortages, overcrowding issues, and many are actually operating at a loss. As a result, more than 1,000 nursing homes have closed since 2015, and more are on their way out. But there might be one last saving grace for baby boomers who still have a decent life into their twilight years, their children. The problem is, millennials are in a tough spot themselves. Housing affordability, stagnating wages, and a looming debt crisis. Many won't be able to get time off work to provide the complex, ongoing assistance their parents might require. And they can't afford to quit because households can no longer support themselves with a single income. Some millennials will be forced to take reduced hours or look for a job with more flexibility, potentially resulting in lower pay meaning they'll be in a tough spot of having to choose between caring for their aging relatives and their own financial survival. For me personally, family comes before everything else. But for many millennials, they'll need to determine if they themselves will have enough money when they retire. A 2006 research study found that when family members over 50 take on unpaid caregiving roles, they'll lose on average over $300,000 in lost income and benefits which is a substantial amount. But it's more than just money. There's the mental, physical, and emotional exhaustion that you will undoubtedly experience. And what's even more terrible can only be summarized by this post. You end up in a strange dynamic where you wish for the day when you don't have to deal with the daily caregiving stressors, and then you realize that you are longing for the death of your parents, 
which is a strange and terrible place to be. But what if I told you that the baby boomer crisis should be the least of your worries? What most people don't realize is that something weird is happening to your job. For one of the first times in history, people are getting fired without actually getting fired. Click here to learn what's happening and how you can stop it from happening to you.